nice man. Are you good on that thing? Huh? Are you good on that? Yeah. That's old school. Uh, Hey, uh, let me make a couple of announcements about the quiz that's, that is Thursday in class. Um, so here, here's the one, th one thing you need to know that will, first off, the, the most important thing you need to know is C's earn degrees, okay? And you're all going to die. So those are two things. And, oh, wait, I have a third one. And couple years from now or five years from now or whatever the case is, the grade you get on the quiz won't matter at all to anything. Okay? So, um, but what you want to do, if you want a good grade, you have to do the readings and you have to watch the videos. Like, you just have to. There's, you know, like, how they teach you in high school how to take the SAT and that sort of thing, and you, like, you narrow it down to two answers and that sort of thing. You cannot do that on these these questions, these quizzes. You can't. It's not possible. So it's about four and a half hours of readings and videos. So you, if you want to do well, you have to read them and watch them. You don't have to do it twice. You just have to concentrate while you're reading and concentrate while you're watching the videos or listening to the audio. Okay, so um, you don't have to print stuff out and underline it. None of that. It doesn't matter. Just do it. You'll be fine. You'll, you, if you do that and you have a reasonable memory, you'll get at least an 8 to a 20, 19 out of 22, maybe 20 out of 22, that sort of thing. You'll do well, okay? You'll be on your path to get an A. But if you don't, you're just going to be guessing. So that's all I'm going to tell you. You need four and a half hours between now and then. And it's best that you've waited. If you haven't started, that's a good thing because, you know, you won't forget anything. And we're going to do it in here. So we're going to have class for a half hour, and you're going to pop your phones out, or if you want to bring a tablet, or if you have a laptop, it's easier for you. Um, you can pu pull that out and take the quiz on Canvas. Okay, cool? Make sure your phone's charged. Make sure everything's charged and stuff, you know? Obviously. It's simple. It's really simple. Any questions? Awesome. I don't have any questions. What up, what up? I, I did not. <laughs> Joy said that one of you maybe maybe had a little too much to drink at the bar last weekend. How many? A few. May have been drinking, and she had a fun encounter with you. So you probably don't remember. You were drinking enough that you probably don't even remember that you talked to Joy. Okay. Um, so here we go. Um, also, no, no, some of you are going to get a, an email. So when you get the email, don't be confused, okay? Some of you are going to get an email telling you to go next class, just for next class, go over to the Wardick building. You're going to watch the first 30 minutes of class from over there. You're going to watch the live stream, and then you're going to take the quiz from over there, okay? I don't know who it's going to be because it's just going to be like 75 random people. We want to just open the class up a little bit so you're not so squished in. Okay, cool? So when you get that email, it's just for next, next class, for Thursday's class. Okay, um, let's go. Uh, today, we're, I'm calling today, wait, first off, we have two volunteers, so tell us your name and where you're from, and yeah. Um, my name is Megan. I'm from South Jersey, and I'm a freshman. South Jersey. Where in South Jersey? Um, I'm like near Cherry Hill. Okay, all right, cool. Um, I'm Kara. I'm a sophomore, and I'm from, like, outside of Philly, Montgomery County. Okay, awesome. Um, we're going to talk about, this is actually, a, I think it's going to be a really, really cool class. And there's another chair up here, and we have another microphone. And anybody, at some point in time, if you say to yourself, Oh, I really need to be, I need to be up here at this table. You can come up to the table. We have a chair, make a name tag, we'll get you a microphone, you're good, right? So it's an open invitation to somebody. At any point, you might, we might be a half hour into class and you realize, hey, I got to be up there. Okay, cool? So we're going to talk about uh, the Supreme Court nomination. And we're, we're, oh wait, I have one final thing. 
Um, can you, hey, uh, team, stream team, can you just turn the volume off, turn the volume down for a hot minute, and I'll give you a thumbs up when we're. Assuming you guys back here saw that. All right, so listen, t I think today's going to be a really cool class. So I've been, let me talk to the two of you. I've been watching, I watched Biden and make the announcement that yes, he's going to choose a black woman to be on the Supreme Court. Okay, so if we can go to the next slide. Um, here's just to pull this off Fox News. I try to, you know, just pull it lots of different places. Um, he's going to pick a black woman. These aren't people. This is like, I don't know. I don't know who came up with those names or whatever, however they showed up. It doesn't really matter. It's, right, it's a news thing. And so Biden says, I made a campaign agreement that I'm going to choose a, a, a black woman to be on the Supreme Court. Um, so uh, I'm going to follow through with that. So it's going to be a black woman. Now, he hasn't nominated anybody yet, so he might turn around and nominate somebody else, right? I, I, I don't know, but probably he's not going to. And so I was thinking to myself, as somebody who thinks about these issues, I, th I thought to myself, self, what do you think about this, right? Like, is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? It feels like one of these things that, uh, um, yeah, it's just one of, I remember, for example, um, those of you who may recall a very important conservative Republican in the United States named Ronald Reagan. And Ronald Reagan made a campaign pledge, very important conservative, you know, in the 20th century, made a campaign pledge that he was going to nominate a woman to the Supreme Court. A similar kind of thing. And people were like, oh, you know, nominate a woman. And he did, right? So I was thinking about this. I'm like, okay, he's going to nominate a black woman. Like, okay, cool. Right? Well, you know, a lot of people, you can imagine the blowback on it. A lot of people talking about it. It's like, what do we think about this? Is this some kind of a affirmative action that I'm not really comfortable with? Or how do, how do I think? Of, so I thought, to, how do I think about this? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through my thought process. I think it's fine. So I'm going to start right there. I think it's perfectly fine. And what I want the two of you to do, or if somebody else ends up coming down here, I want you to be asking, okay, but what about this or what about that? I want, I want, I want to be, I think it's fine. But I'm not certain it's fine. Their main, I know that if I talk to some people who are really, really smart and really thought this was a, and thought this was a, a really bad idea and they were very smart, I am certain they could blow holes in my thinking. Like they would get me to stop and say like, well, hang on, I, yeah, maybe, I, yeah, maybe I'm, not, I'm not seeing this or I'm not seeing that or like, I don't know, you know what I mean? So we don't, we don't have those, whoever those people are, they're not here, but, but you're here. And there are people in this classroom who also have some really interesting ideas and thoughts and probably would disagree that maybe it's not such a good idea and to say outright in the beginning that this is what you're going to do and that sort of thing. And so, I, so I, as we go along, what I want is for the two of you as much as possible, just ask questions like, well, what about this or what about that, okay? Now, mind you, once again, you may not speak very much in the class. It really depends on what you have to say or wh what you're thinking about, so it's fine, right? You had no idea what the topic was before you sat down here today. So um, so let me, let me start. Let's go to the first slide. So let me, let me just start with this idea of filling a position, okay? Um, first off, for, for the vast majority of positions unless they're very highly, highly specialized, okay? The vast majority of positions, even positions like mine, there are hundreds and thousands and sometimes tens of thousands of people who would be eligible to fill that position and could do it reasonably well. Could do it very well, right? 
So we're immediately thinking, as soon as we think about filling positions, we always think about the best person for the job, right? Isn't that, isn't that what like, you talk about, right? Like you, you're thinking like, okay, I want to prove myself to be the best. That's why I want a high GPA, and I'm going to pad my resume with all sorts of stuff, which mostly, by the way, is nonsensical and nobody really cares. But nonetheless, we do it anyway, and we're told to do that, and we want to look really good, and we want to show someone we're the best possible person for the job, even before they've ever talked to us, okay? So, but there are so many people that could do the job. So, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, you're never going to get the best, because you, first off, you can never know what the best person is, because there's so many people who could do most any job. You take, like, my job here. Right? Like, first off, any, well, I was going to say, any knucklehead could do my job. But I think back to me when I first started teaching this class. Um, I, I technically, technically, I don't know what it means to be qualified. I didn't have a PhD. I was working. I was writing my dissertation. Okay, I was 30 years, 31 years old. I had never had a class in race relations in all my life, which means nothing because you all are having a class. In two years from now, if I ask you what you remember from this class, there will be nothing. Maybe you'll remember my green shirt, or maybe you'll remember that I carried beads around, but you won't remember anything else other than that. So like, okay, that doesn't really matter, but I never had a class in race relations. I was teaching it. So I, I stand up in front of about 150 students over in Waring Com Commons back in the fall of 1991, and I start talking about U.S. race and ethnic relations, which is what the class was. They hired me just because they didn't have anybody else to teach the class. And that the person who was going to teach it just decided they didn't want to teach it at the last minute. They needed somebody, and they're like, yeah, the guy's like, yeah, you'll do fine. You're fine. You're good, right? I'm like, all right, I guess. Here I go, right? So, but so many people could have, were a more quote-unquote qualified. I don't even know what it means to be qualified to teach a class, right? But I, I did fine. My, my class reviews came back at the end of the semester, end of semester evaluations came back. They were really positive across the board. I was teaching mostly white, an extraordinary high volume of white men who were going to be police officers, right? Back then, that's how it worked. And so I'm like, they came back really positive. So I'm like, well, okay, according to them, I did a pretty reasonable job, right? But when I think back to what I knew then and what I know now, I was an idiot. I was completely unqualified. I was out of my game. I was out of the zone. There's no way I should have been teaching that class at all because I was, I was 30 years, 31 years stupid, right? I was really, really, I, I can't tell you how much, of a, of a knucklehead that I was at that point in time. But nonetheless, I did fine. But back then, there were, would have been, according to who were at my level, there were probably 100,000 people in the United States who could have taught that class, this class. Now, with my experience at it, okay, that, that number's down a little bit, but there are lots and lots of people who could teach the class. So it's like, but who's the best? Who would be the best? Who would be most qualified? Okay, I don't know. So in some ways, we're just picking people. Right? To be really clear, you're just grabbing people and you're putting them in positions. And most of the positions, when you, the two, have you ever had an internship, either of you? Yeah? No? Are you looking for one? You have one? No. You're looking? Okay. Use the mic when you talk. So you're looking. And so, but have you had jobs, though? Were you, did you, did you get a job? Yeah. Where'd you work? Um, at a restaurant. Were you qualified for it? Was it fun? No. Well, it wasn't qualified, but then I was after I started. After They trained me. They trained you, right? Yeah. And it was fine. Wasn't that difficult? No. Okay. And y how about you? I've Megan? had like three jobs. Yeah? Or four. And were you qualified for any of them before you started? I was qualified for not my first job, but my second job. Your second job? Because of my first job. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, and you're going to find pretty much throughout your lives, your lives, both of you, that that's going to be kind of how it is always. Because there's nothing, unless you're like really in a na very narrow major at, in, in Penn State, like, like accounting or something, I don't know, even engineering, you know, like mostly you, you just learn stuff on the, it, you learn it on the job. 
Like you just get in and you learn and that's where we go, right? So you're going to find that throughout your lives, especially if you're like a sociology major or something, you know, okay? So, all right, so you basically just, so, so you, you got to fill the job. You can just, so you, what do you want to do? You can, you can just interview a huge range of unknown people, but just like the two of you, you came and sat down here today. I don't know who you are. I don't know how you think. I don't know anything about you. I just, you volunteered. I picked you. Here you are, right? So like, all right, it's either, it's hit or miss. But it's hit because you're awesome. But you know what I mean. But in a job situation, it's hit or miss. And then, you know, but we can test hire people, which is why we do internships, right? And then he's like, okay, this person breathes. They can, they can, they can breathe while they're typing and thinking at the same time great, we'll hire them. They show up on time, they're good to go, right? And then we'll train them, right? Like we trained you in the restaurant, right? This is kind of how it is. And then, uh, or we hire recommended people. We'll do some kind of nepotism. You'll get a job because you know somebody and then, you know, that, that'll be it. And someone will say, hey, here we go, okay? So, um, go to the next slide then. Okay, so what is the Supreme Court position? This is a question for the two of you. I want to ask you. What's the Supreme Court position and how many people do you think would be the best or most qualified to be on the Supreme Court? A topic that you know nothing about, which makes you perfect representatives of the average American or global citizen. What do you think? What do you think makes a person qualified to be on the Supreme Court? Megan, how about you? Um, I'd say they have experience being like a judge for like at least 20 years or something be experience being a judge okay for at least a significant period of time right yeah what else um i'm not sure what the qualifications would be but i feel like there's probably not a lot of people that are qualified for it uh-huh because because i feel like it's like a position of power that requires a lot of like responsibility and knowledge that most average americans don't have Okay. All right. Kara, how about you? Um, I would say the same thing, like, in the way that there's probably not that many people who could do, like, the best job because it's a really, like, it's a really specified position that, like, I mean, if you have a lot of experience being a judge, I guess that's kind of, like, the most qualified you can get for it. So what, what would be the best job being a Supreme Court justice? Like what, what's like the, doing the best job, what does that mean? Um, like enforcing, well, I guess enforcing is the right word. Um, like knowing the Constitution really well and knowing how to enforce it in a court of law and how to think about it when you yeah. say enforce it you mean how to think about it yeah uh-huh uh -huh. what what and what else what, what do you think being a judge does for either of you like what does actually being a judge teach you about being a judge like I why is that important i think they need to be able to make decisions that represent like the greater good not necessarily personal decisions but something that would benefit like our country as a whole you and w what kind of judge then well, hang on, hang on. Can I back up a little bit? You just said make decisions. I make decisions all the time. I'm thinking about the country. I'm thinking about all these very complicated issues, and I'm thinking it through. So would I be qualified? No. Because? You're, like, on the Supreme Court, you're making decisions that more deeply impact individuals' lives than just making an everyday decision, like, oh, am I going to go to work today? Listen, my friend, when... I start getting emails about grades and stuff. People have the idea that I'm def directly impacting their lives. Like, all the whole world's going to fall apart if they get a, the B plus when, in fact, they need an A minus. I just want to put that out there. All yeah, right. but that's just what college students think. It's not I really know. true. Okay. D oh, did you all hear that? Okay. All right. Go ahead. So, so anything else? The best, most qualified. I mean, you're, this is good. You're, you're putting some good stuff out there. Anything else? Well, I would say it's it needs to be someone who can, in a way, put aside their opinions mm -hmm. and really just focus on what the Constitution means by saying certain things. I mm -hmm. forget what that word is, but like. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So I yeah. agree with that. Okay. Which makes it problematic when we have the hearings and people start asking about their views on abortion and all that kind of stuff, right? Which is like, well, hang on a second. I'm like, what? Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. So let me, so who, so, so again, do you have any idea where it's laid out? Who's, who is qualified to be on the Supreme Court? Do either of you have any idea where it's laid, where that is laid out or it's discussed? I have no idea. Uh-huh. I wouldn't expect you to, by the way. I don't know. You don't know? No. Okay. But you have the idea that at some point, it's like, it's got to be people who are really, who, who are trained at some level and have experience. It must be somewhere that that's the case. Yeah. Right? I'd hope so. You hope so? Why do you hope so? Because it's kind of working. Well, Why I'd, do you hope so? I'd hope that it's laid out, like, who should be on our Supreme Court and who shouldn't, like, based on qualifications. I feel like if they're just picking anybody because of, like, who they know and, like, what their political opinion is, then it's probably not doing its job correctly. You mean kind of like how the rest of the country, how the entire country is run? Yes. Right? On nepotism, largely? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, let me say the Constitution is actually pretty short. So it doesn't, it's kind of, it's like the Bible, right? People, or it's like the Quran. A lot of Muslims, you hear this idea of Sharia law. Well, we have Sharia law in, in Christianity. It's the same thing. Christians who think that you can interpret all, all legal people's actions according to the Bible, right? And according to the Quran or according to the Constitution. But these are like really small books. The Bible and the Quran, are, they're just mostly stories. So it's like, how are you going to interpret? We, we, we have like 10 million laws on the books in the United States. 10 million? You don't get that. That's not in the Constitution. You know what I mean? And it's like not in the Bible. It's not in the Quran. I mean, it's like, this is kind of silly, but to think about that. Okay, but let's go, let's look at this, right? So let me show you a couple things. Now, this is, this is from 2015. So this is before, um, this goes only up to 2017. So the last three, Trump's picks are not, are not part of this. Um, but uh, most, but not all, have had some kind of legal background. And when we go back to, you know, the first 100, 150 years, legal background, law, so-called law school, wasn't what law school is today, right? So understand. So when we talk about the, the lawyers who were on the Supreme Court, so-called lawyers, um, very different than the lawyers of today, Okay. But, uh, but 104 had uh, some kind of private practice. Only 68, so these are, these don't add, there's 112 here, but some of them go into multiple slots, right? Like you, you have private practice and you were a judge for a few years and you were in an elected office kind of thing, right? But only 68 of them actually worked as a judge at all. And some of those worked as a judge in like small local and state and county kind of environments. They weren't like, you know, federal judges and stuff, and they didn't have a lot of experience, right? There are some people, um, in fact, f you know, four of our current Supreme Court justices, one, the most recent one, um, uh, uh, not the most recent, but Elena Kagan has owned no judicial experience at all, and three of them, including John Roberts, who's the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, has very little judicial experience. I mean, very little, minimal, right? So before he was elected brought on to the Supreme Court. So, you know, this is, these are the backgrounds. So anybody can be on the Supreme Court, by the way. So, like, you know, I can be on the Supreme Court. You can nominate me. If anyone wants to, you know, put my name in to Biden. Um, I'm good. Joy Alicious, I think. Joy would be great on the Supreme Court, right? So, so anyway, this is what it looks like, okay? So now we say, like, huh, all right, well, where's this laid out and how's it laid out? And then let's look at, let's look at the next slide. Um, so here, these are just the 68 judges. This is the experience they have, right? So 40, 45 are only have state, county, and city court experience. City court experience. Like you're a judge in New York City or you're a judge in Baltimore. And then, you know, you end up on the Supreme Court. This isn't, you know, this isn't years and years and years, you know, working as a federal appellate court judge or something, right? So, so we have all these people who are out there with, 
kind of greater or lesser degrees of experience and say like, huh, all right, well, what, what's that mean? So now, now what's just, okay, what, what are some thoughts, right? So like, huh. So you were saying, I hope so. You were saying like, yeah, you could be a judge for 20 years. Well, what if you're a city judge for 20 years and then you end up on the Supreme Court? Mind you, this is going, can you go back one? This is going all the way back to 1789. And this isn't, you have to go back to 1789. You can't just use the past 20 or 30 or 40 years as the measurement of this. Because otherwise, we could just start, then if that was the case, then we could just get rid of the Second Amendment. Because, like, you know, the reason we, people have semi-automatic, we have a, an arsenal of millions upon millions of weapons in this country is based on the Second Amendment that was written you know, 240 um, years ago, practically, right? So that, that's why that matters. So anyway, did, what do you think about that? I mean, I feel like they, from that, all of those categories are involved enough in the government and, mm -hmm. like, law to be able to have a background knowledge of things that the Supreme Court might discuss. So what, do you, what, do you, what knowledge, though? Like, what do you mean? Like, what knowledge? Well, like, you have to know the Constitution and, like... Yeah. Do you really? I mean, really. No, I mean, I'm just going to push back on that. Like, what? okay, okay, you got to know the Constitution. Yeah, you got to know the Constitution at some level, right? But what else? What do you need to know? I just want to just push on, because this is really important for where we go today. I feel like... It's a little like concerning that not all of them have had like federal level judicial like jobs or like positions. Uh huh. I don't know why someone would be elected to be on the Supreme Court if they haven't had that experience because you need to be able to understand how like like decisions are made and like when you make a decision, how it affects everything. Like okay. I feel like they should have experience with like big cases and how it turned out based on like their verdict? Well, okay, but people do, right? These are, you know, even if we go back to, you know, the 1820s, right? And people are in a judgeship somewhere, but you know, they're not running like the, the it's not like the ninth, ninth district or something like that, but you know, this is, people are thinking through and they're, they're good thinkers and they're able to very carefully think about issues and weigh them and like, you know, really sort through stuff and like, okay, all right, that's good. That's the best you really, it's like you learning the restaurant trade, right? You know, you get there and you say, man, I don't really understand any of this. But, you know, slowly, day after day, you start to really grab onto it and like, okay, you're, you're here, you've already, you're a pretty good thinker, you know, you've got it down a little bit. And then you, you know, you, you, you start, now you're applying, you're, you're in this world of, of the courts, right? And you say like, okay, I, I, all right, let me just keep digging away at this. Let's keep thinking, 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 right? And pretty soon, you, you know, you, you, you start seeing the consequences of all these things, and then you, start, you become a pretty good thinker, right? Like teachers, do, do you have a thought, do you have a response to that? Yeah, I was just like thinking about it, like obviously when you're working a job, like at a restaurant, you pick things up over time, but I don't know if it's necessarily smart to have people pick things up while they're working on the Supreme Court. Well, you're working with other people, though. Yeah. Right? So they're always people. And so you're part of a team. And maybe, you know, you don't need ever, some people on the team, they, they do certain things really well, and other people do. You know, Clarence Thomas, for example. You know, you know Clarence Thomas, right, on the courts? You all know Clarence Thomas. Is. He's one of, if you don't know, if he's one of our Supreme Court justices. He didn't speak in the court at all, in the middle of a case, he didn't speak for something like 22 years, this guy. He never said a word. You know, like people come in and they argue a case in front of the court and, and the court's sitting there and they're popping questions at him and I'm, you know, I'm like one of the lawyers and I'm trying to argue my case and, and you all are on the Supreme Court and you're just hammering me with stuff and what about this and that and the other thing. Clarence Thomas didn't speak for like 22 years. He wrote stuff, but he didn't speak. He just sat there listening. So it's like, okay, everybody has their strong points and weak points. He's still, like, making really big decisions, though. Well, he's voting on those decisions. 
And sometimes he's writing about them, but the other people, he's writing briefs and so on, and the other justices have to sign off on that. So they're going to fine-tune it and do all sorts of stuff. So no one person is really doing it. But, you know, you assume that together it's good, right? Together, together the court itself can do a pretty good job. Okay, so you don't want dullards on there, but let's assume we're not going to get dullards, right? So you're going to get some people that are fairly sharp. So that's what you're, the two of you are really saying that, right? We got to be, okay. So, um, so you've, everyone's following, right? You see, you see, we see where this is going here, okay? Now, um, let's, go, let's go to the next one. Okay, so I said, all right, so who's qualified? Who, who's qualified, right? How many people are qualified in the United States to be on the Supreme Court? I started asking myself this question, right? And I said, well, let me try to count up who's qualified. Let me just, let me just count some people. Like, I'm going to leave out the sociology professors and so on. Um, we're going we're gonna to just stick with people with legal experience, although that's not necessary. You don't have to have legal experience. But we're going to stick with that just to make it easier. You know what I mean? Because I doubt a president in this day and age is going to be able to push through uh, a, 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 a sociology or anthropology professor or an English literature professor to be on the Supreme Court. I doubt that's going to happen. So let's stick to the ones with legal experience, okay? So take a look. U.S. federal judges, um, 1,700. That includes Article Three judges. So you, Article Three judges are the judges a point, according to Article Three of the Con U.S. Constitution, they're the judges that are appointed by the president. That's what we're arguing about all the time, right? Like Biden's trying to send through all these judges and Trump was trying to do it and then the other side doesn't let him go through and so on. So 1,700 U.S. federal judges, right? State judges, about 30,000. Okay, okay, so that's, that's a lot. Some of them, some of the federal judges have very recent, have very little experience because they just got put on, including just like last week, they brought like five people up onto the courts. Um, some of the state judges, same thing, but some of the state judges have been on, and U.S. federal have been on for a long time, 10, 15, 20 years, right? Law school professors, okay? So about 15,000 in the United States. Um, U.S. states attorneys, these are the attorneys that are arguing, you know, U.S. federal cases. And then other people who work at the Department of Justice or they hold some kind of political office, or I don't know however many that would be, right? But these would be the people, just if we think about legal issues, these would be the people who are qualified. Qualified, let's just say, right? Some of them more so than others. Are we good? Any, is that fine? Is that fair that we would say that? We would go there? I mean, do you have any questions about that? Um, I, just think it's oh. I just think it's interesting that there seem to be so many people with so much experience, and then the people like the other chart you just showed us was like they didn't have that experience. Well, like, well, no, hang on. No, 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 go back to the other. If, if we take sense. some of these people, go back one more. Some of these people who are federal judges, right? They were also maybe a prosecutor or they worked in the Justice Department or they were professors or something like that. Or they worked in the military. Maybe they were like j judge advocates, like the, the, what they call JAGs. So lots of, so go forward. One more, yeah. So a lot of these people had mo lots of experience in different areas, right? Okay. So, you know, but this is just, I'm just sticking with just their legal experience. They actually have a lot of experience. There are a lot of those folks who are college professors or, I mean, taught in law schools and that sort of thing, right? Okay. And you look at like Obama, he taught at the law school at University of Chicago for a while, and then he became a senator, and then, you know, he never worked as a judge, but, uh, yeah. Okay, so, hang on. Let me just see if I have something here. Let me make sure that I'm not missing anything in my argument or in my discussion, okay? Um, all right, let's go to the next slide. Um, so, who's the most qualified or the best person? Remember the question. So, of all those people that I laid out, Who's the most qualified or the best person? Like, where would you start? It's your job, right? You got to pick them out. You know, you're Biden and his team, and you got to you got to find the people. Like, where where are you going to start? I think I would start looking with in the one thousand seven hundred of 
people with positions. Federal judgeship positions? Yeah. Wait, but you think that's, what about if you're working on the state Supreme Court for 30 years and you're in a federal judgeship position for 10 years? State Supreme Court is pretty serious, right? So how would you, so, okay, but you'd start federal. What else, where else would you go? Um, I would probably see like how long they've been working because like you said, some people were just not like put on the courts like a week ago. Okay, all right. What about professors? Because you have to be pretty smart to be a professor in law school, I would think. Not in sociology. You can be, and they'll hire any knucklehead to teach in sociology, but. Carrot, how about you? Um, I feel like I would consider them, but I would also look to see what other experience they have maybe besides that. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. So, so we're coming back to this, most qualified. So how many people do you think are most qualified? What's your gut feeling? A lot. Like what? Like throw in, go back, can you go back one slide? Like how many, th like think of most qualified, best possible person. You look at all these possible people. How many do you think would be most qualified? I think if we're looking at most qualified, the number is going to be very small. Well, ba based on what? Because for example, right? If you say, well, based on their years of experience, so we're going to pick federal judges. That you have to be on the federal in a federal judgeship for, I don't know what. Let's start. Let's start at the top. 30 years, and we start backing off, backing off. At what point do you stop and be like, okay, that's most qualified? Maybe like 10 years, and I feel like maybe if they held more than one like position, like maybe they were also a professor at one point. Okay, and what if they were on for 10 years, but they only tried like three cases a year, as opposed to somebody else who's only been on for four years, but they're like doing all these really dynamic cases, really consequential cases, like, oh, man, just really busy doing this really important stuff that's transforming the fabric of the country. I'm confusing you, right? Yes. Okay, good. So how do you, what about those people? Well, I mean, I would say those people are probably pretty qualified as well. Okay. So now give me a number. How many people do you think are going to be most qualified? When they hear the word most, they probably say maybe like somewhere under 100. Just kick a number out. It doesn't matter. Yeah, maybe somewhere around 100. You just said that because she said that. Yeah. If she said 500, you just said 500. Okay, you know, okay, we'll say 100, all right? Let's go. Okay. Go to the next slide. Okay, so here. So I count all those people up, and we got 46, seven, right? 46,793 or more. There's more, but whatever. I'm, I got to come up with a number, right? So I assume, okay, 1% of them have a sufficient amount of experience that would make them, like, okay, you're reasonably qualified. Got it? 1% of you. The top 1%, right? Kind of like, I don't know, whatever that is. So we're going to go with, okay, you have enough experience in your talented thinkers. That's 468 people. Okay? That's a random number. I just made that up. I was sitting at my desk. I'm just going like, ah, whatever. I got to come up with a number. Boom, 1%. There it is. Does that feel okay? Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So then I said, Go to the next slide. I said, all right, but that's still too big for me, right? Because this is Supreme Court. This is really big. So I said, what if we just take the exceptional 20% of that group? And we would 94. Okay? Does 94 feel pretty good? Yeah. Okay. Now, um, is that cool? 94 feel all right for you, bro? 94 people are qualified to be on the Supreme Court. Of all these people out there working, it's like, yeah, okay, you guys got it. You've done a lot of work. Cool, you can handle it. 94. All right? Now, so, hold tight. <laughs> this is how I spend my weekends, by the way, just thinking about random stuff like this. Um, so what, what, I wanna, what I wanna tell you, though, I want you to see something here. The 490 some 468 that's about i just want to give you i want to give you show you something if you take those top three rows that's about 468 people okay that's a lot of people 
who are qualified to be on the Supreme Court. And if we take just the bottom ones, 94 people, that's going to be either this section or that section over there. We'll just say this section right here in the front. That's about 94 people. It's a little less than 94, but nonetheless, okay? It's like, that's a lot of people, okay, right? So we're like, okay, let's like really just hold that for a second. That's a lot of people who could be on the Supreme Court. Now, if I'm Biden, what's your job if you're Biden? You got that many people. What's your job? You got it. To pick one. Yeah, you got to narrow it down, right? So how are you going to do that? I feel like you could look at more, like a more detailed, I guess, version of their experience. Like if they have, like how you were saying earlier, there's someone who's working on more like, um, I guess, intense cases or something or like have made. Okay. If that makes sense. And it, then it totally makes sense. And yet it makes no sense. It makes mm -hmm. sense, but it makes, no, let me say, why it makes perfect sense, right? Awesome. Great answer. Basically, you just reached up into the air and you randomly pulled down some idea and you said, how, based on, how about based on this? You could have reached over here and pulled down a different idea or you could have reached down over here and pulled down a different one or you could have asked for, what did, what's that? You could have asked for the help and, you, and some random person could have thrown out an idea to you and it would have been the same thing. It's just random because your job is you got 94 MFers sitting right there, and you got to get it down to like three of them. And you don't give a damn who, it doesn't matter who it is, really. Does it matter? Do you think it matters? Does it matter? I think it matters. How does it matter? Well, first of all, I think that there's a difference between what you should do and what Biden's probably going to do. I think he's going to pick someone that shares his values and his interests to go on the Supreme Court so that certain things will sway in his favor, because that's what... They so usually do. They're going to pick them not based on all their qualifications. Instead, they're going to pick them based on how they match their political gain. Yeah, yeah, but first off, that's what we all do. Yeah. I mean, everyone does it, but yeah. it based on like qualifications. But what's qualified? We're now back in this question of who's what's qualified? Because look, the, I take any of these two random people here. They're all these are all like really high quality, serious thinkers, right? They're, you're all good thinkers, right? And I'm just going to pick two at random. I'm going to pick her and I'm going to pick him. Okay, wait, can you two stand up just really fast? I'm going to pick these two people, okay? And I'm like, and then it's going to be like, okay, the difference between them is X, one is X, and one is Y, okay? And just two random things. Okay, then is, have it, sit down. Thanks, thanks. And then can you two guys stand up? And then, or not, no, I'm going to pick these two guys. But it's going to be two very different things. Yeah, he's gonna, and he's taller than him, so he's like got an advantage anyway, right? Especially if you start playing basketball with the president and Obama gets real. Like, okay, have a seat. And then like, doesn't wherever you go, it doesn't. It's just random. You see what I mean? Like you're you're in this world of like, but there should be some sort of qualification. And I'm saying there is no qualification. Just like teaching this class, what what makes somebody qualified to teach? this class like what do you think makes it qualify makes a person qualified to teach this class i think to be qualified you'd have to have taken similar classes while you were in college and have a degree that relates to it okay so that wasn't me okay so i'm unqualified right off the bat okay what else maybe prior teaching experience okay i had some i had prior teaching experience Remember my first class I ever taught, I was, I, it was called Cybernetics and Human Ecology. I was 24 years old. I walked in the classroom. True story. Did I tell this story? I walked in, and I, I was 24 years old. They hired me to teach a class called Cybernetics and Human Ecology. I walked into the classroom. There was about this many students. And I stood in front of the class, and I said, um, okay, I guess we can get started here. Does anyone know what cybernetics is? And no one raised their hand. And I went, huh. Does anybody know what human ecology is? And nobody raised their hand. Someone said, well, I kind of know what ecology is, I think. I'm like, okay, well, that's good. I had a class in human ecology. So I don't even know what cybernetics means. And that's what this class is about. So um, I guess we're going to have 10 weeks to figure it out. And nobody left. 
And it was an awesome class. And in 10 weeks, we all figured it out together. And I guess the only thing that made me qualified is that I was willing to just stand there and dig in with everyone and figure it out. And at the end of the semester, they gave me these glowing reviews. And I'm like, well, how, first off, you're a bunch of knuckleheads, because I already told you I don't know anything, and you gave me these really positive reviews, so I don't know what that says about you, but to me, they, maybe your expectations were so low that it didn't matter, but, you know, I'm like, okay, but we figured it out, and we did it, and it was good, so what makes, what makes a person quali- like, to, to, to teach this class, like, what is it? And so what makes one of them qualified to be on the court, more qualified than somebody else? Because if I pick him, if I pick this guy, that means he has some characteristics that, that, that she doesn't have. So if I pick her, she, I get certain things with her that I don't get with him. And if I pick this person right here, then they, he has certain characteristics. Or her right here, it doesn't matter. Wherever I pick, some of you do better in other things than, than other people because you're all qu- eminently qualified. You're all good right? You're, you're smart. You're good. You're going to adjudicate well. You're going to think well. You're like, got it. So it's like, okay. You, you know, you lose stuff. Like for me, you know, you get, there's certain things you get by having me teach this class that, you know, you don't get by having someone else teach this class, right? If it was somebody else, you'd get all these really cool, awesome, positive benefits. And, you know, you get me and you got to deal with the things that I don't bring to the classroom. So it's like it's six of one, half dozen of the other. And you're just like, okay, here we go. Any thoughts? I'm not say- by the way, I'm not saying qualifications don't matter. I'm saying that once you get to a certain level, I don't know how you measure stuff anymore. I agree with that. You would, you would agree with that? Yes. I think now I would say that I agree with that too. You, okay, so I don't want you to agree with it. What I want you to do is continue to see if, as we go along... I want you to see if you can come up with an argument for why I'm wrong. Because I'm not right. Right? Remember that. I'm not right. I'm just like, I'm going down a path. And I'm trying to figure, I want, I'm trying to figure out why I'm wrong. Like, because I'm always wanting to know why I'm wrong. Right? This is the thing. Tell me why I'm wrong. Like, what am I missing here? Because I don't want to sound like an idiot. I don't want to be an idiot. So, like, help me out. So, you, so, so you got to keep, you know, your job is to keep thinking about this. I think I made a very persuasive argument. But uh, is there anyone in the class who would, is there anybody who would, who has an argument for, who, who would say why well, I'm wrong? Anybody haven't thought about what, what I'm missing? Wait. Okay, yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, I don't think you're wrong. I just think, like, I mean, I haven't heard you say this yet. Um, I think, like, what makes someone qualified for the Supreme Court is the fact, like, you need to look at who already is on the court because you can't just have, like, the same nine people because then you're not, like, Ah. one person is going to say the exact same thing as the next person. Okay. Where it's, like, like, they could all have the same qualification in terms of, like, experience and job and whatever. In ter- when I say experience, I mean, like, job experience. Okay. But, like, when you have someone who, like, or when you have, like, nine people who all think the same. Okay. It, like, becomes a problem because it's, like, you, like, they're all going to see something the same way. Whereas, okay. like, you might have people who are thinking differently who just don't get to voice that opinion. Okay. So, for, so you're saying if we stick with these 94 people right here, we're going to stay with 94, Right then we're actually kind of limiting ourselves, right? Because what we really want to do is reach up there in the corner, maybe we want to be thinking about this, and grab some folks up there, right? Like we have Clarence Thomas, the guy that never spoke for 20-some years or whatever, right? But maybe it's because he was sitting in a Buddhist Zazen posture, meditating the whole time, and elevating himself to a different spiritual level, and then he brought that stuff into his, his cases. Like, I don't know, but maybe we just want somebody else, right? Okay. That's reasonable. Does that make, would, would you argue, would you, does that make sense what you just said? That makes sense. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but it also opens a can of worms. Yeah. Yeah, because also I feel like you could find different thinking people and different types of people within that 94 people that are really qualified. And you said 
oh, like, instead of taking people from those 94, you can reach over there. But okay. I think you would be able to find people that are qualified uh -huh. within those 94 people, okay. but also different thinkers, like uh -huh. she said. Okay. All right. Got it. So here, let, let, let me... Let me look at, let me, sh sh let's look at something else, right? Okay, go to, go to the next slide. So take a look here. Um, wait, one more. Go forward. All right. So I then went and I looked at the top 30 law schools in the United States. And I said, okay, let's just, re even though Supreme Court justices, certainly in the 20th century, and, tw and will continue to be true in the 21st century, are largely drawn from three different law schools, two different law schools by and large, Harvard and Yale. But nonetheless, we'll throw Princeton in there and whatever. Not Penn State, you won't, but nonetheless, let's look at the top 30 law schools, okay? 10% of the, just the grads, 10% are Asian, 9% Hispanic, 6% are black, and there's a minimal gender divide. So let's assume that three are black women and three are black men, okay? So we're gonna, st we're gonna now go back to Biden. And Biden's saying, hey, I'm just going to, I'm picking a black woman. And, you know, here we go. And, and so, like, okay, we just look at the top 30 law schools. So over time, year after year after year, you take all of these people who are, you know, more likely than not to, be, to move into more important positions. Because mostly you're not going to be on the federal appeals court or federal district court if you went into a, one of the bottom law schools like you're, you're not you're going to have gone to one of the top schools okay so so that means we can assume that three of the 94 here i'm just making an assumption by the way okay this is a general assumption you got 94 people here so this is me now going back to what i've been thinking about with biden okay and him deciding hey i'm going to pick a black woman and I'm thinking, well, you got 94 people here. Again, it's a made-up number, but it, it's cool, right? Are we good? 94, bro. Is that fine that I chose 94? It's like, whatever. Okay, so I got 94 people here. And then I think, okay, well, on average, three of them, at least three of them, because I'm going by this, I'm going by the jobs, I'm going by who are in these positions of excellence, right? By and large, three of them, at least three, are going to be black women, right? Three of the exceptional ones, you know, people, right? We've, we narrowed it down to all these folks, right? And by and large, th six are going to be black people, six are black men, and three are black women, okay? Who are going to be, remember, the really exceptional people. I mean, th you know, these are, these are people, these, th you know, you all are people who really have a resume. You really are smart, and your law school professors would say you're smart. Your colleagues think you're smart. You have a record of doing some really important things. And if you're on the appellate court or whatever the court is, the, the state, a state Supreme Court, you have a record of some, you know, you've adjudicated very important cases if you're judges. If not, you're maybe a professor at a top law school and you do this, you do that. But these are like really serious people. And so now we got, we, we got to narrow it down. And I want to narrow it down somehow. And you had said, you know, you remember when I said to you, you just randomly pulled something out of the thin air, right? And so, which is what you did. You said, like, well, let's just, which isn't bad, by the way, right? It's not a criticism. Do, do you all remember that? When, Carrot, can you, do you remember what you said? I said, like, well, wh wh who are you going to pick out of these people? Oh, the one I said about the, like, what type of cases they Yeah, yeah, think. okay. Yep, like cases. So you just pull that out of the middle of nowhere, okay? Okay, well, pull, and then you were, pull, what'd you pull out? You said. Well, I just said that if I'm looking at this many people, I would pick based on personal values. Okay, personal values maybe, right? Okay, that or the number of years on the bench. Like, you're all qualified, so what if we do this? Why don't we just pick the black women? Like, whatever, guys. We don't have any black women on the Supreme Court. We've never have. And like, why don't we just pick the black? They're all qualified. What, what the hell, right? You know, why don't we pick the men with, how about we pick the men with glasses? Okay, that narrows it down. We got one guy here, one, another guy there. There's two more. There's four of them with glasses. Let's go with them, right? Or here's what we could do. Here's what usually happens. I'm President Biden. You're my associates. You work with me, right? Your, your people I've hired, 
meaning you think like me, you want to please me, the whole nine yards, right? You work with me. You're part of my inner team. And I say, hey, Kara, um, why, don't you, why don't the two of you go out and just give me some names? Go talk, talk to folks. Give me some names, right? You got it? Like, just do that. Can you do that? That's what usually happens. It's like, you just go give me names. And who are they going to be? They're going to be friends of friends. There's going to be people who you're really connected with or your friends are connected with or whatever the case is, right? It's just going to be like, yeah, there's going to be, it's nepotism, right? I mean, it's going to be someone you know. It's not going to be some, oh, well, you know, I really hear there's a really, really smart person on the other side of the country who whatever. It's like, no, it's going to just be some connection somehow. So like, okay, so let's just go with the black women. So will the three black women just come down the front and like you're no, we're gonna we're gonna nominate you for being on the Supreme Court? What the hell is the difference? But by by but mind you, there are many more black women who you didn't get there. So we're also not even gonna limit ourselves to that. We're still even gonna go out beyond that because in the forty six thousand there are all sorts of black women who are like gonna be like really highly. And can you? Give the mic to the LSU guy. So, the the purple sweatshirt dude. So, so you, you see, right? So it's like, all right. So we'll go with that. You you got it, right? All right, bro. Help um, me out. Sorry, this is really nerve wracking. Um, but I just I don't understand why your boundaries are so finite. Like uh, she was mentioning earlier about trying to fill different like personality gaps or yeah. different personal belief gaps within the Supreme Court. Like, why can't this apply to that certain situation? And, you know, why can't we just take tests out of these people? Like empathy tests or personality tests, IQ tests, law tests, everything like that, and compare them all. And even included in the Supreme Court. Like, why can't we have them take personality tests and compare it with those 94 people or those 1,000 people, even the 100,000 people that are all qualified? Well, th dude, that is such an awesome question. Why do you... Why do you think we can't do... Why, why would you not want to do that? I don't know. I don't know why I wouldn't want to do that. It's, it, well, it, it starts with your opening up... Any, any, do, hang on. Let me, let me ask. Um, yeah, I don't know. Why would you not want to do that? That's my question. Do, are you going to answer that question? Yeah. Um, I think it's important not to do that because you don't want to have personal beliefs and like personalities in a situation that's making such a big decision like the abortion law like obviously that's a big topic of conversation these days and we don't want someone that it their personal beliefs overtake the logic if that makes sense so you so you're yeah so the so the argument the problem but you're going to get that anyway but the problem is, yes, this is a really good point, right? So, dude, you're, at, you're raising a really important question. You, that's a really awesome response. And basically, you just open up this can of worms. I, we can't even, I can't even, we can't, we can't even agree on whether we, we all ought to be just wearing masks in a closed room. Like, we can't, something simple like that. Like, could you all just wear, could, dude, could you, could you just put your masks over your noses, for example? Like, holy shit. Can we just agree to put our masks over our noses? We can't even agree to do that. And now we're going to start giving personality tests and like this and that. It's like, oh my God, shit, just pick someone, man. Just pick somebody. You, you know what I mean? So yeah, so if we start that, we start down that road, it is a deep, dark corridor of pain and torture. Does that, is that a response? Can I answer that? Yeah, go ahead. Man. Or my beliefs towards that? Yeah. Well, I mean, logic isn't it, you know? Like okay. Logic yeah. is, is just, I don't know. It's, it's very um, contrasting with empathy. Okay. Um, so I, the reason I said the test is just to put pressure on Biden. So it's not just picking some random black woman. It's picking a random black woman who has the gaps that aren't filled in the Supreme Court. And also there is a gap in the Supreme Court and that's the lack of a black person. Okay. But, what, but why do you think we... Okay, first off, 
So, it, I mean, it needs to represent certain areas. Okay, so let me just say this. Now I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go back to my exercise that I was doing and I'm gonna say it slightly differently, right? So it's not that there are just gonna, I just did that as an exercise to be like, yeah, we'll narrow it down, we'll get three black women, we'll pick the three black women who end up there. There's like dozens and dozens. Do, I mean, there are hundreds. I mean, we're gonna get the, we want the elite, right? We, we, we really want the people who are really, not the elite, but really smart, right? There are dozens of black um, women in this country who are, dude, there are hundreds. I mean, but I'm not limiting it to dozens, right, okay? But I'm just, pick, I'm just going for black women in this country who are like, whoa, okay. Like, yeah, she's like, if, if they were in this room, given a, given a cl whatever, it doesn't matter, who are just really top notch, okay? It's like, okay, well, you got dozens of people pick from and you just got to pick one well that's the process that's going on right now they're, they've they've got this they've got far too many people that then they could ever choose okay and he's and so he started the process by saying well we're just going to choose the black women so whew, okay that would be like in this classroom i have to pick one i have to pick one student out in the class who's going to do i don't know get to wear an lsu t sweatshirt dude you know what i mean and I and I gotta, um, and I gotta pick that person. It's like, well, how about we're gonna start? I'm gonna start right here. It's gonna be from this section. Ah, fuck no. It's gonna be these three rows here. We're just gonna start right here in these three rows. You just like, let's go. You know what I mean? Let's just do that. So, does that make sense? Does that make sense, bro? It's a little bit too important of a decision to just do that. Well, no, but he's already starting with, um, he's starting with dozens of people. Okay, so I'm just giving an example there, but he's starting with dozens of people. Yeah. And like, and, and, and he's got to narrow this thing down. It's the same if, let's say we take tests in the Supreme Court and there's a, a gap in logic. Yeah. And there's not enough people with logic and there's too many people with empathy. I mean, why can't we start with that? Well, because, That's another hypothetical situation. Yeah, as well. because you because you've opened up a can of worms here. <laughs> we can't argue. We can't even agree to wear masks yeah. over our noses. We're not going to agree what's more important. Well, yeah, it's a hypothetical situation. Yeah, no, but yeah. it's real. Like you can't. At some level, you just go through and you make it happen. Mm -hmm. And we're a country that had Donald Trump as a president for four years. So <laughs> like, we can handle empathy and logic being discombobulated, right? We can do that. That's fine, right? But I like you, you're you're basically making I mean, you're making kind of a liberal argument here in a way. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you see that, right? Did you see that he was making a liberal argument? I feel like everybody can see that. And I'm kind of just like I voicing. I'm just kind of voicing that because I know it might be a little outlandish, but I just saw that was missing out of the argument. OK. No, I think that's fair. I think it's fair. So here, let me go. Let me let me then go here. Right, go to the next slide. So here, here's the so now I have a question for the two of you. It could be anybody, actually, really. Um, so, um, so a couple. These are. Th th I don't know where I got this from, but some were saying like, okay, these are three women. Everyone's just playing games, right? It's like these are three women on the short list, right? So, um, so I want I want then now the two of you to respond following kind of what he said, different people said, but what we said, to this comment, by narrowing his pick to just black women, right, Biden's not ensuring that he's going, he's not going to ensure, he's not ensuring that he's going to nominate the most capable person for the Supreme Court. How would you respond to somebody saying that? Given everything, we, and this is for everyone in class, like how would you respond to that? By, by focusing on just a black woman, by starting off the process saying, yep, it's going to be a black woman, you're not ensuring that we're going to pick the most capable person for the Supreme Court. How would you respond to that? I mean, I feel like it's really, like, kind of like we were saying this whole time, it's really hard to find, like, the most capable person and yeah. what really, like, makes those qualifications. And we were also saying at one point you do have to narrow it down in such a way that's maybe, okay, I'm going to pick a black woman. So I think by starting out with that argument, I don't think that 
there's anything wrong or starting out with that like narrowing down to black women i don't think that there's an issue with that uh-huh okay and there's not an issue ideologically right because there are lots of really conservative black women there are lots of really liberal black women there we're going to assume that anybody who's going to choose and who the republicans are going to accept is going to be somebody who's thoughtful and can use logic and have a certain degree of empathy and so on. it's like okay got it yes megan um, I would say that it's not necessarily true that it ensures he's not picking the right person because maybe the best person for the job is a black woman, but I feel like he needs... Well, hang on. you got to go back there. Best person for the job. There's 330 million Americans. There's 46,000 Americans who technically could be qualified to do this job. First off, there are many more than that, but like... So you just fell into a trap right there by accepting at some level that there is a best person, that we could even know who that is. So I would argue you can't even know who that is. I mean, how the fuck, who's the best person? Right, like, who's the smartest person in this class? The one that gets the highest grade at the end of the semester? Come on, man, like what? Like, who's the smartest person in the class? Who's the best person? Anyway, go ahead. I was just going to say that I think that the statement is not correct by stating that he is ensuring he's not picking the best person mm -hmm. because they don't know like if that's true or not. You can't make that statement like maybe sh the person he ends up picking as a black woman is the best person, but mm -hmm. I also think that I would not personally narrow my decision just based on someone's race. Like I would look at multiple categories of people okay well let's let me then throw something else out at you right go to the next slide so this is what S senator ted cruz said this guy he see, he calls biden's promise to nominate the first black woman in the supreme court offensive and insulting right that the president's basically telling the americans so by saying like right here hey we're going to work with y'all and we're telling everybody else like that you're ineligible Right? What, do you have any thoughts on that? I don't think it's insulting for him to say that he's doing that. I think that it's not offensive either. I don't find it personally offensive. Uh huh. Uh huh. I don't find it offensive. I don't think it's insulting. Well, given what I said today, what would you say to Cruz, given what, what I said today? Well, you said today there's no way to technically determine who's the best since there's mm -hmm. so many. So then it's, he's just finding a different way to narrow it down in a sense. And mm -hmm. they're saying they think that that way he's narrowing it down is offensive. Yeah, w once you get to, like if you're the most qualified, if you're like really, really smart people, once we get you into this group of 94, I'm not gonna fucking narrow it. it it's gonna, we're gonna argue. Like he's gonna be like, "Hey, we need more empathy there," and you know, she's gonna say like, "Oh, well, how about a little more logic?" And someone, we're just gonna argue over what that is. But every one of them is like, "Yeah, y'all are some rock stars. You got this." Um, I also was gonna say that I think not to this extreme, but I can see where people might be a little bit thrown off where you're immediately narrowing down, yeah. not even just based on like anything, just if you're immediately going into this decision, yeah. publicly saying, oh, I'm gonna narrow it down by this, like I'm only looking at this, yeah. I can see how people might think that that could be a little bit problematic, but yeah. if you go about it in the way where you're like, oh, I would really like to nominate a black woman, but potentially if someone else, you think that they might be a better fit yeah, yeah, exactly. Then you might go with that. Okay, I awesome. think that might be where people find the problem with it. Okay, here, wait, hang on, hang on, because I'm going to throw one more thing at you. Hold on. Yeah, because also, it's as if, like, we're not going to find really how they qualify black women. Like, come on, man, that's one of the statements. Like, there are, do, you, do you not, do you think there are no amazingly brilliant black women? And so here, go to the final slide. Take it, look at this. 108 of 115 members of the Supreme Court were white men. So this goes to what you said. And 
that like in men who have been wealthier, you know, hang on, hang on, listen, 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 wait, before you, this is actually the thing here. It's like 108 of 115 white men who have come from, by and large, the wealthy class with a certain framework of seeing the world as straight white men. As far as I know, not a single one of them has been gay and more privileged. It's like, that's it. That's who's adjudicated this country, right? So now when people look at Biden, when Cruz looks at Biden and says, well, you're not going to get the best person. It's like, what, these are, oh, how about we need another wealthy white man? Is that what it is? There are like no really smart black women? Like, come on, man. Basically, that's the argument. And so what I'm saying, I'm starting from the premise that wherever I start, if I want left-handed, disabled people who are dyslexic and under five feet tall and find the most qualified, I'll find someone who could be awesome on the Supreme Court. Like, put them on, right? So you know what I mean, right? Anyway, hey, you, 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 you guys were great. Thanks, man. <laughs> Okay, y'all, don't forget to, yo, don't forget to do the readings and all of that good stuff.